going on guys, Nanderfit93 here with another video and in case you guys have been living under a rock or haven't seen Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, or Instagram in the last few days or since iOS 14 came out, then you know that everybody's going crazy with these new custom home screens for their iPhones, right? Whether it's with icon packs, you know, cool images that are there, new widgets. So I wanted to show you guys what it's like to have that on iPad OS 14 because I haven't seen a lot of videos like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna customize my iPad Pro and I'm gonna show you guys what I was able to do because it's actually really awesome. So let's hop right into it. So obviously we gotta start by grabbing the iPad right here. I'm gonna scooch over a little bit so I can put the iPad here and let's get started guys. So feel free to you know copy this verbatim or use a little, little bits and pieces for some inspiration for your own home screen setups because I really like how iPadOS is starting to look, iPadOS 14 is starting to look. Do I wish we can put the widgets all over the screen? Absolutely, but we can't do that and we're limited to just this sidebar here, right? So let me start off by saying that I'm not a huge fan of icon packs. You know, aesthetically they look amazing and I've seen some sick, sick iOS 14 setups. But again, with icon packs, you're relying on shortcuts. And for every single application that you have, if you want to have the same theme, then you have to do a shortcut for every single application. and Ain't nobody got time for that, guys, and I'm not a huge fan of that because I don't want to have to click on an icon, on a cool looking icon, and then it takes me to the shortcuts, and then it takes me to that actual application. So I don't really like how that looks, so I avoided icon packs. And what I did was pretty much customize all my widgets and went with third-party widgets as well. So without further ado, let's actually start with all the widgets that I have on here, guys. So the first one is actually called Weatherline. And Weatherline is really made for iOS 14 because when you open up the actual application, you get this you know, 2X size version of an iPhone app. So I tend to avoid the app itself. But once you set up the app, then you can get this nice widget, which is the line widget, right? So it kind of gives you a nice little graph of how the temperature is gonna be changing over time. As you can see, I'm in Tampa, Florida. It's gonna start raining pretty soon. And I can edit the widget and change my location and also change the theme right in here, right? And also, if you wanna edit the home screen, there are multiple different kinds. It's not just the one size. So if I go into Weatherline, you can see that they, that they have the single one, the double one, the bigger one, and then it goes on and on with daily forecast, and you can compare and contrast everything, it gives you nice statistics. So it's actually a really, really cool weather app, and you know, I had the Apple stock weather app all last year with iPadOS 13, and now finally there's one that I really like, and it's free. You, there is in-app purchases to change all the themes, but for me, dark mode is perfect. This next widget is actually pretty cool. So you guys might think that this is just the photo widget, like the photo library scrolling through images for me, it's actually not. So this is called Event Time. And Event Time is a really cool like way to customize uh, tickers. So essentially, my wife and I, were gonna get married October 10th. So what I have here is pretty much a ticker to let me know how far out I am from that day. And we're 15 days away, guys. And it lets you put in whatever custom picture you want. And you can have as many as you want, right? So for instance, you click on this, you can edit it, you can delete it, you can go in and change the actual pictures of it, which is really, really nice. So it kind of lets you customize to whatever you want. You can have whatever picture, whatever ticker, like if there's a release of the new PS5 coming out, right? And you pre-ordered it, throw a picture of the PS5 on there and the ticker. And it comes in all these different sizes. So you can actually go down to event time and you have all the different sizes right here. And it does kind of show you and acclimate the picture to the actual size. And then you also have the favorite events. You can line up a few and take up more space on that actual widget part. So that's event time. So far, so good. I'm freaking loving it. And then if I keep scrolling down, uh, this is the Google one, which is actually really impressive because all you do is you tap on the Google icon, you can start typing into Google. And then also, if I hold it down and we want to edit the home screen, add a new Google icon, if I scroll down, go to Google, you do have the double one, which allows you to voice search right away, which is a really cool feature. And then also on iPhones, there is another option there to use photo recognition to take pictures of actual products to find them online and things like that. And when it works, it's cool. So that's the Google widget, it's pretty self-explanatory, just a quick way to search on Google. Again, the battery widget, self-explanatory, I just like to know what all my devices are doing from a battery standpoint. So this next widget right here is actually by Spark Mail by a company called Readle. If you guys have been following the channel for a while, you guys know that Spark Mail is my preferred iOS and iPadOS form of email client, just because it's really easy to use, it separates everything really easily, it doesn't let me get stuck with newsletters and notifications that are irrelevant for me. So I'm super happy that they brought over a widget. And again, I'm gonna show you guys all the different ones. And the reason I have it like this is to be able to see a little bit more. But if I go into here, go into Spark, which is down here, you actually have the single one, the double one, a full one, and then you have a full one with actions. So you can actually do actions from there. Then you can actually have your different calendars on here. 
and then emails and calendar. So there's a bunch of different widgets to choose from just purely from the Spark app because again, it is your email client, it is a communication avenue, and it is a calendar as well. So it wants to show all that at a glance, which is super nice. And then if we keep scrolling down here, you see these two kind of pie charts here. And again, if you guys have seen my last videos on iPadOS 13 widgets, then you know that one of my favorite ones from iPadOS 13 was the Usage app, right? And the Usage app is actually still under the beta testing and everything like that, but I did pull it out here because it's just a really cool look at a glance to see, A, how much memory slash RAM you're using, and then also how much storage space you have left. The one thing that's been a little bit iffy with widgets is that they don't refresh live, right? So they refresh every few minutes. Because if they were to refresh live, it would suck up so much battery that it wouldn't be worth having them on there. And that's the issue that's happening with usage. So these refresh every few minutes, which again, for memory, eh, but for storage, it's totally fine, right? And I kind of just like it there as a proof of concept too. And again, you can change the color, so you go in here, and then when you go into the actual application, then they are real-time statistics. So you can see that my memory is actually moving as I'm moving my finger on here, right? So it's moving in, in real time, which is really cool. Gives you all the data you would want. And this is really easy to use, and it's pretty customizable. You can change the colors of everything. You know what I'm saying? So if I wanted to make it red, I can make it red. And all of a sudden the icon is red down here, if you guys can see on the bottom right. And then eventually when it's time to refresh, these pie charts will also go red. And then my last two widgets that I have on here, one of them is my Apple TV widget because I do like watching Apple TV Plus and I do think I'm actually gonna sign up for it once my free trial is over, that one year that we've had since the iPhone 11 Pro Max. And then this, this one down here, which again, isn't populated quite yet because I just got it and it hasn't populated yet. This is a Spotify active listening widget, right? So every five minutes, it'll refresh itself, which for songs is okay because most songs are anywhere, for anywhere from three to five minutes. And it just tells you what song you're actively listening to, right? And right now, I'm listening to Circles by Post Malone, and it should show up here eventually, which is really nice. And again, if you long press on here, edit home screen, you can go into the tune track, and it lets you choose between Apple Music and Spotify. So if you're a Spotify user, rejoice, guys. So from a widget's perspective, that's what I've kind of changed up. I've changed up my weather app, I added a nice little ticker, I kept Google, even though they got rid of the real live updates, or the trending one, they got rid of all the trending stuff from Google, because again, it can't update or refresh that quickly. So I like just having the Google search bar right there for me. And then Spark, my usage app widgets, Spotify to know what I'm listening to, and then my Apple TV just to see what I'm watching next, guys. And you can see that I have a nice clean wallpaper, everything is empty on the home screen, and then when you go to the right, you have all of my folders. And that's how I like to keep my home screen really organized, really clean, so when I get into it, it's like a pleasure to open up the iPad Pro, and it makes me wanna work on it more so than a laptop like this behind me. So what that is gonna do for this video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed, hopefully you got some inspiration. I'm gonna link all the applications that I use for the, on the widget side down below, so feel free to try them out. Every single one that I have on there is with the free version. Some of them have in-app purchases, which I haven't even touched, and it does let you customize it a decent amount more. And I'm also gonna put down there a couple of other application widgets you should try out that have free versions as well, because now that we're able to customize it a little bit, I think we should definitely go for it. Again, if the icon packs didn't have that shortcut uh, necessity, then I'd be all over it and I would definitely be changing everything as quickly as I can. But for now, this is awesome and I'm just hoping that eventually Apple will give us a little bit more freedom when it comes to customizing the entire home screen of the iPad Pro. So until then guys, that's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Twitter right here. I'm really active on Twitter and I usually answer pretty much instantly when somebody comments on something on Twitter. But uh, that's what, I, like I said, until next time guys, peace.